Good morning and welcome to Sacred Heart Catholic Church. We want to take a moment to extend a very warm welcome to everyone. Whether you're a regular, just visiting, or are new to our community, we are delighted to have you here. The intentions for today's Mass is for the repose of the soul of James Krug, from whom this Mass is being offered. As precautions to slow the possible spread of coronavirus, we will be taking these precautions in Mass. The sign of the peace will be admitted, and the services are online. Our celebrant for today's Mass is Father George Elliott. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all of those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord.
After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the woman in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead and is going before you to Galilee. Therefore, you, there you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to him, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. One thing that I really love to do is to, to watch my, my little nieces and nephews play. Because for, for a little kid, the world is extremely small. It's all extremely simple. Right? I mean, when it's my, my little niece, as long as her stuffed animals are sitting up straight at her Fisher Price tea party, then the world is okay. It's all fine. Right? I mean, there could be a worldwide pandemic, and you know everything is falling apart, but she's quite o- all right because her little stuffed animals are doing what they're supposed to, right? That's it's it's a very endearing reality. It's it's you look at it and you think, wow, the world is so so small and so simple for this little child. And while it's endearing for you know a three to five year old it would not be so endearing for an adult, right? I mean, if, if Deacon, Deacon Tony was really just concerned about his, his stuffed animal sitting up straight at the tea party, that would, that would be a problem, right? That would not be okay. <laughs> you know, today in this feast, what we are seeing, or what is happening, is that Jesus Christ is opening up our worldview. He's saying to us, you all thought that this natural life was the end? Absolutely not. There is a life beyond this. He's saying to us, look, this this world, this creation, which yes, is my gift and it's a good thing, this is all passing away. It's going to be gone. The life that I will give you the spiritual life, eternal life, that is the full worldview. He's taking us from our little Fisher Price tea party of this world and helping us see the totality of reality. That's what we're celebrating today. I think the situation that we're in right now in the world with the response to coronavirus, 
can be very enlightening, or perhaps it's a good, good thing for us to, to compare ourselves to. If, so I'm not, first off, I'm not critiquing any response to coronavirus. We should uh, take serious measures. This is a real virus. It has real um, consequences, and we need to be careful. However, it's quite striking the magnitude of the response that we have had to coronavirus which threatens our natural lives, and yet the lack of response that we have to anything that threatens our supernatural lives. I don't think I'm saying anything too controversial if I were to say, you know what? At least 10% of our nation isn't going to be entering into eternal life. Right? Ten percent of the people that are alive right now, they probably will not have eternal life. It's a sad fact, but it's a true fact. Can you imagine if President Trump got on the news and said to everybody, we will be shutting down the nation. Only essential businesses will be open in order to save the eternal life of those ten percent. Could you imagine if he stood up and did that? He'd be mocked. Could you imagine somebody just closing up their doors and saying, you know what, if I keep the doors of my business, my livelihood open, someone might lose their supernatural life. And so I'm closing it. That's it. We're not doing it. Could you imagine people wearing goofy masks on their faces just because it might cause someone else to lose the life of God within them? Standing six feet away from each other? Working campus ministry, it's hard enough to get them to not touch each other. And yet we're doing all of this because of our natural lives. So I want to challenge everybody to learn from this coronavirus. There's been an amazing response on behalf of society. And I think it challenges us as Christians, the Christian society, to learn how to make a real response to the things that can threaten our supernatural health. We'll all put on a mask when we go to the, the grocery store. But how often do we put a, a mask, a guard over our mouths to protect from gossip? We'll all be socially distant. But how often do we avoid contact with someone because we find that every time we do come in contact with that person, we fall into sin? Every social event has been canceled for the last month and probably for the next month, if not two or three. How often do we choose not to go to a social event because we might be exposed to something that could kill our soul? Really, the United States as a whole, pretty much everybody, has just lost 25% of their income for this year. How often do we give up 25% of our income for the sake of protecting our supernatural lives? What has happened here with the coronavirus response? I hope will be a wake-up call for all of us to recognize that, you know what? We can take real responses to attacks. And if we take those responses, we actually can curb the effects of those attacks. And so, if we value our supernatural lives even more than our natural lives, which that's precisely what we're celebrating today, 
then we should be able to learn that we can take real concrete responses to supernatural threats. And if we actually execute and work together as a community, we can curb the attacks of the devil. And so to all of you, happy Easter. The Lord is risen. From today on, let's work together to preserve life everlasting. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us pray to our Heavenly Father with confidence. For the Holy Church of God, that the Bride of Christ may be more fully cleansed by His blood in this time of His passion and resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those in our parish and in Nacogdoches County, that we may put to death the old self Rise with a new to a new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are alone or abandoned, for the oppressed and the hungry, the homeless and the unborn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. The sick may experience the healing touch of Christ, that the medical and public health professionals who are working to keep our community safe from disease may be strengthened in their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the repose of the soul of James Krug, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the faithful departed, that they may be led through the Lord's passion and cross to the glory of his resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, our Father, through the resurrection of your Son, you have given us certain hope of immortality. In your mercy, grant both temporal and spiritual aid through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let's accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, so they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Sub celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord, amen. 
Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, he, when supper was ended, <clears throat> he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as ones who were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into, your, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us.
through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Oh, my God, you take away the sins of the world on our Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not, not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my, under my roof, roof, but only, only say, say the, the word, and my, and my soul, soul shall be healed. Be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your head for a blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Good morning and happy Easter. Uh, thank you for all of you to, for uh, tuning in for Mass. Um, I wish you all could be here. I'm looking forward to the day when um, everybody can be at Mass again. However, for now, we're just uh, keeping it as it is. Um, two announcements that I wanted to make. One is that um, we've received some money from the diocese, from Catholic Charities, uh, to help out anybody who's in just a really difficult financial situation right now. And I know a lot of people have lost their jobs or have had hours significantly cut. Um, and so if you are in that situation, uh, please contact the office. We don't have the amount of money to you know, keep someone um, or to support someone for a long period of time, but if there's a little gap before unemployment k kicks in or before you can figure out something else, um, please do contact us because we do have some, some funds set aside for that. Um, also, I just want to ask everybody to please uh, continue to, to share and like and comment and do all of those things on our social media. As you guys know, this is definitely a time of, of crisis, and at times of crisis, people either run away from God or they run to God. And since we can't meet up with people personally, um, we, we're really trying to push hard on our social media to, to at least encounter them in that way and support the people who are perhaps tempted to run away from God um, and keep them close to our Lord during this difficult time, and then also to catch any of the people that um, are perhaps running to God. Um, yeah, so please uh, comment, like, share, follow, do all of those things. The more what, what's called engagement we can get, so the more, more clicks and things of the sort, um, that, that ranks us higher in um, the algorithms on social media, and then that makes it such that there's a higher probability that it will appear in the news feed, so that first page whenever you go to Facebook or anything like that, um, makes it appear in other people's news feeds, even if they aren't your friend or even if they don't follow us. The, it, it kind of um, works in that way that if they have enough Points in contact or points of contact, then um, it'll it'll send those um, opportunities for evangelization, and just to give some people uh, hope and strength during this time. So thank you all very much. Happy Easter and have a great day.